Today, the topic is what different seats could I use when I don't want to use a normal seat together with the foot rest. Why would this be potentially be a discussion? Well, look, you know, here, physiologically, geometrically, I'm sitting well. You know, my foot are well supported so that I can push myself um, against the chair backrest. But you see that due to the um, space taken by my thighs, I cannot get close to my patient or to my workplace if it's, uh, say, if there's a vertical wall. Plus, that foot rest will need to be adjusted for, uh, for everybody, and that's not always practical. The other thing is whenever you sit on a chair that has a foot rest, you should be aware that people will sit here, then press on the foot rest, and then get deep in the chair. These are two steps. The human mind is lazy. Everything that takes two steps will often not be done. Yeah? So these are the problems that I'm trying to resolve. How can I have my feet on the ground and how can I you know, uh, make it in such a way that my thighs take less space? One of the very famous solutions for that is this chair, which is called the Hawk Capisco. It's quite an, uh, an old model, you know, it's been out there for a long time, but it's still a great chair. And you see that due to the short seat depth, I'll be able to sit with my th thighs slightly descending. So I can be sitting like on a normal chair at plus minus 90 degrees, but I can also sit higher. When do I recommend this chair? Well, typically for people who tell me that they have uh, hip joint pain and they need to change position frequently. Another use case is, especially in the watchmaking industry, I will have people sit the other way around and you see when they're leaning forward a little, well, a thoracic support will be much more useful than a lumbar support. There's one thing we need to be uh, aware of on this chair, is you see the seat pan can be slid forward quite a little, uh, but when it's all the way to the front, there's a gap here in between. And therefore, you know, you should be careful that if you adjust it like this, people will be sitting far away from the backrest and will slouch. So it's important, although it's a short seat pan, to make sure that it's pushed back uh, quite far. This chair isn't necessary for all, because, you know, like most alternative concepts, when people will test it, you know, half of them will like it, half of them will hate it. Among those who will hate it, you will have ladies wearing skirts. You know, with this shape, it's not meant for wearing a skirt. That's why we can have other type of stools. You see, with a short um, seat pan also, and same, I'm in this position, where I'm at more than 90 degrees, I have a backrest that I can adjust in height, and I'm much closer to the type of chair that we all know. Therefore, the acceptance of this chair is likely to be, you know, greater. However, again, that's not a chair for every use case. Typically, I once used it with an aesthetician. She was doing a lot of massage and things. And you know, the chair was behind her, and she was telling me, well, you know, when I sit, I miss the seat 50% uh, of the time. Therefore, you know, I'm not too happy with this chair because I need to look where I'm going to sit before I sit. For her, a saddle chair was better. Because on a saddle chair, you will center yourself with respect to the seat quite easily. Some saddle chairs come with a backrest. This one has no backrest today, but you can mount one. Yeah. Um, again, we have a chair which is great for some people, but which isn't for every use case. You see, the shape of the saddle will not be the same for men and for women. So, you know, saddle chairs are typically more chairs for one individual person, if you buy, say, 10 saddle chairs for 10 people, well, you take the risk that, you know, uh, a number of um, chairs are not designed for the user. The other thing is that saddle chairs tend to increase the pressure on the inner thighs here, and therefore the literature recommends to not use them for more than four hours in a row which is okay typically for most medical professions because you don't sit in a row for four hours per day, uh, you stand, etc. But you have to bear it uh, in mind, especially in an industrial context, context where people will be behind their workplace all day long. 
And we have a final alternative which resolves this problem of pressure um, against the si size here. This is a seed that I like really a lot. It's called 6311 by score. And you see the, the seed pan has kind of a cut shape here so that you don't feel excessive pressure um, under your thighs when you sit high. It has a backrest that you can adjust like on any uh, normal chair. It can be reclined uh, forward, the backrest can be adjusted also. So this is a great chair that, in my experience, is widely accepted. It's probably among those that I showed you, the one that, is the, that has the uh, highest acceptance rate and which will allow you to sit until, say, probably here, um, whilst being well supported by the ground and well supported in the backrest. And you see that, as um, said in the beginning of the video, here I can go closer to my patient than if I would be sitting at 90 degrees. And as I don't have a foot rest, it's very easy to sit properly uh, right uh, away. So that's it for this informational video. There's no goal linked to it. Just be aware of the variety of the chair models that are out there and be aware of the fact that they definitely need to be tested before you purchase them because we're talking about seating concepts which are slightly different than what people are used to so there's often an acceptance issue or at least some time to get used to. Both the, the Capisco chair and the, the models by score are distributed worldwide uh, quite f fairly well, so probably you will be able to find them wherever you live.